is uh, there's several ideas I just want to leave with you as we end the semester. First one is this idea of be here now. This is something we used to teach freshmen back when I was in another college because one of the things that some of us uh, struggle with, I'm, I'm ADHD, have been most of my life, all of my life I guess, and sometimes it's hard for me to focus and stay centered on a task. And that has some repercussions, not just in academics and studies, but in, in all of life. It's so one of the things that we used to tell students is be here now. Be where you are when you're there. Do what you're doing when you're doing it. Because what happens to us so often is we start down a path and we're in maybe in a, in a classroom or whatever, and maybe we're not engaged, so we pull out our cell phones and we start doing other things. And pretty quickly, we're not in the moment. We're not in the experience. And we're not getting the full benefit out of the time. And as I said, this has repercussions. Um, I shared a few times over the last several years my experience my first semester at York College back in 1900, none of your business, when I went home at the end of the semester. And uh, I didn't have a good family like a lot of you don't. Uh, I, I hear stories about families and what influences they've had positively on students. and I. I I wish I had that. But I went home and it was a disastrous experience. I didn't get along with my parents. I fought with my brother and sisters. Uh, and after just a few days, you know, I was there for Christmas Day and then I said, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going to go and visit some friends on the way back to college. And, and I left. It's the last time I ever saw my family again. Uh, my father ran off with another woman, got a divorce. Uh, eventually, uh, both the children came to live with Marie and I because we, uh, my mother went into a mental institution. And so I never had the experience of that. And I look back on that last Christmas that I had, and I thought, what a waste I did made of that time. It could have been time when I engaged with people, when I gave them a little grace because, you know, I was all full of myself. I, I know none of that happens to you as freshmen at college, but I got home and I was pretty full of who I was and what I'd accomplished. And I was on my own now and nobody could tell me what to do. And I look back now and I needed humility and I needed grace. And I didn't have any of that. And I'll look back with regret the rest of my life, the fact that I missed an opportunity. I never saw my dad again. I saw him once before he died, and I didn't know he died until six months after he was dead. And I think a lot about, I wish I had had more time. I wish I had invested more time. Now that I'm an adult and I look back on that and I realize the importance of relationships. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, next slide, Josh, to learn to listen to people. Uh, once again, being ADHD, I have a big problem with that. And so a lot of times I'm talking to people, I'll notice that I'm looking down at my desk, or maybe I'm looking at my computer, or maybe I'm looking at the clock. And I find myself doing that, and I think I need to be focusing on whoever is in front of me at the moment. Because their time is valuable. This discussion means a lot. I think as teachers, faculty members, staff members, we all have these experiences that we didn't know were happening. Uh, I think all of us can relate an experience where we've talked with a student, and maybe a month or two later we get a note from the student that says, my life was changed by the discussion we had. And I'm sitting there thinking, what discussion was that? Now, I can usually dredge up the discussion but the fact of the matter is it was much more important to them at that moment than it was to me. Because I didn't realize what's going on inside their lives, inside their head, and inside their thoughts. And as they were talking and as they were expressing, it was more important for them to have that moment probably than it was to me. So when you are here in the moment, don't just be there but be engaged. Don't just listen but ask questions. You'll find, and this is a truism of nature, that people think you are a lot smarter when you ask them to talk about themselves. Because everybody wants to let you know who they are 
and what's important about them. Third thing, Josh. This one really hits me in the time that we live in right now. I see so many people polarizing themselves because of, of what's going on in the world. Or, you know, this, the announcement yesterday about Jerusalem, uh, you know, has just polarized the globe. And I look at everybody who are choosing up sides on all these issues. And I really encourage you, be defined by what you love not by what you're against. Because the core of who you are, the importance of who you are as a person, and as who you are as, as a child of God, is what you stand for, not what you stand against. And I think it's important for all of us not only to do that, but define what that is. What is truly at the core of who you are that's important to you? Fourth thing, happiness and contentment are never constant. I think we have this vision that somehow I'm going to reach a point in my life or something is going to happen at some point in my life where I'll just be happy from that moment on. Uh, I turned 66 this year and that hasn't happened to me yet. Happiness and contentment come every once in a while. Usually because I'm looking for them and I'm working there. But something struck me this last fall. I was in a meeting with a bunch of other college presidents. And one of them said that somebody instructed me to find what gives you joy. I think those of us who work at your college are extremely lucky. Sometimes we get caught up in the busyness and the turmoil and the dumb decisions kids make. And, and stuff that happens all the time around here. And we forget that you are what gives us joy. You know, when I, I, I come to chapel every day I'm in town, and one of the reasons I come to chapel is because we make you come to chapel, so I think I need to be in chapel. But the other thing is, it starts my day in such a wonderful way to see you, to talk to you, to smile. You are the joy of this place. And don't ever lose that fact about who you are and what you do, but find out what gives you joy. Your life should be centered on that. I have, I have a brother who is retired. He's eight years younger than I am. I'm a little jealous about that. But he hated his job every day of his 30-year career. And now he's finally happy because he said, I can retire and I can do what I want. And I thought, if I had to do what I didn't want for 30 years, I don't think I could stand it. Find your passion. Find what gives you joy. And do that. It may not make as much money as some other occupations. Or as much as your parents want you to make. Because, you know, they're counting on you for their retirement. <laughs> but find what makes you joyful and what gives you happiness, and what gives you contentment. And remember that the happiness and contentment are never going to be constant. Finally, the most important thing that I hope happens when you hear is the opportunity to find God. Some of you resist that, and I understand that. Some of you play around the edges with that. Some of you are wholeheartedly, and some of you make a commitment. One of my favorite passages in the entire New Testament is in Acts chapter 17 where Paul in the city of Athens has been debating some philosophers. And he makes this statement. He says, The God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth. And he doesn't live in temples built by human hands. And he doesn't need humans to do things for him because he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men. They should inhabit the whole earth and he set apart the times for them to live and, and the places and the boundaries of their lands. Here's the statement he makes at the end. God did this so that men would seek him and search him and find him. 
though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. I hope as you go away from this place, whether you're coming back or not coming back, that you will think back on some of the encounters that you have been exposed to. Because our God is alive. He does control this universe. He does give us every good and perfect thing that we have. But we live in a flawed world. And God wants to rescue you from that. Don't sell Him short. If you haven't sought Him yet, continue looking for Him because He's not far away. He wants you. And as I end every semester, I always like to say the priestly blessing from Numbers chapter 6. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face to you and give you peace.